again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This week I've got a short but effective riff for working on your 16th note grooves that should help turbocharge your finger picking articulation and stamina, your ghost notes and your string skipping accuracy. So buckle up and let's get to it. So here we have the riff played at a tempo of 110 beats per minute with the backing track. The drum track and tab are all available to download over at TalkingBass.net so just follow the link in the info below and while you're there remember to check out hundreds of extra bass lessons on the lesson map and they're all organised and systemised by topic for ease of navigation. Then if you enjoy those lessons be sure to try out a complete course and take your bass playing to the next level. We have courses for beginners, there's a huge sight reading course, slap bass, ear training, chord tones, loads more so go check it out. Okay, so first let's just break down the notes in that riff. So it's pretty easy in terms of the actual notes. We're just in C minor, we start third fret of the A string and we're going to be using the C and then the G, the perfect fifth from there. So that's gonna be the fifth fret of the D string and then the octave of the C at the fifth fret of the G string. So that's the notes that we're gonna be using for the first couple of bars. Then we move up to the E flat, sixth fret of the A string and then we're gonna use the octave the eighth fret of the G string, then we work down chromatically, D, fifth fret of the A string, and then the D flat at the fourth fret of the A string, and its octave at the sixth fret of the G string. So they're the only notes that we're going to be using, so we're really looking at the rhythms in there. So we begin, like I said, on that third fret of the A string, and first of all we have this rhythm. Okay, so just get that down first, because we're going to be using that same rhythm on these other notes. Okay, so we've got the C and then we're going between that and a ghost note. So I'll talk about this in, a, in a, a little while. I'll talk about the actual technique that I'm using here, but we're going to have note, then ghost note, leading back into the note. So C, ghost note, C, another ghost note, and then two Cs. So that's the first part. Then we have another C, then a ghost note, and then another C. So that's the rhythm you want to get down. So Okay, so that's the first part before we move to the fifth and the octave. Once you have that little rhythm under your fingers, then we can move up to the G, the fifth fret of the D string, okay? And that gives us our first bar. So, so we've got two notes there on that G. Okay, then we play the same rhythm again. And then instead of playing the C before the two Gs, we just jump up onto the G string there and play the octave of the C at the fifth fret. So, okay, and this is where it's going to start testing your finger picking ability. So, okay, so that's the first two bars. So when we just put those together, three, four, and. Next, we pretty much repeat those first two bars, but we move up to the E flat and then chromatically move down, as I mentioned earlier. So we jump up to the E flat, sixth fret of the A string, and we play. And then instead of playing the uh, the perfect fifth pattern there, we just play the octave of the uh, of the E flat there at the eighth fret of the G string. We just play two notes on there. So you can see how getting that, uh, that opening 16th note uh, rhythm is really, really important because we're just moving it around. And then we just chromatically descend. So we move on to the D, fifth fret of the A string, and then drop down to the D flat. So, 
and then we have the four notes on the uh, octave again, just as we did on the C. Sorry. Okay, so all together, those first, uh, sorry, the second two bars. Okay, so that's the complete riff. So all together, three, four. So, obviously, you want to start out really slowly with this riff. You know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of ghost notes and movement between ghost notes and fretted notes. You've got the jump between the uh, root note and the octaves. You know, there's a lot going on. So, start out really slow, just getting it under your fingers, just getting that muscle memory working. And then you can start playing along to the track. So, I've supplied two tracks for this. I've got, we've got one at 90 beats per minute and then one at 110 beats per minute. So after you've got it under your fingers and you feel quite confident, try at 90 beats per minute, which sounds like this. Once you feel confident with the track at that speed and you feel like you're settling into the groove with it, then you can try upping the stakes and moving up to 110 beats per minute. So here we are at 110. Okay, so now let's have a look at that riff from a technical standpoint. So one of the first things that you're probably going to run into problems with is the ghost notes. So let's have a look at, uh, at ghost notes here. Now, I've talked about ghost notes in a lot of other lessons, and you might have heard me talking about something I call home position. You know, this isn't something I invented, it's just a name that I've given to it. You know, most bass players do this, but there's no real name for it. So, first of all, you're going to want to have a look at this home position. So, let's have a look at that. So. For a home position, we're going to be laying that first finger across the third mm -hmm. fret there because we're at the C. So you want you want this to be wherever you're playing, okay? So I'm going to lay that first finger down lightly, not pressing down the string, uh, not pressing the strings down. You're just holding it lightly across, okay? Dead weight. So when you do that, you'll probably get a few harmonics there. So it's the same same pressure as playing a harmonic. So we've got that first finger there. Then we bring the second, third, and fourth fingers down. Kachink. So we've got that second and third finger rising up just over the uh, over the edge of the neck there, edge of the fretboard. So when you do that and you lay those down, again, not pressing the strings down, just lying there uh, quite gently, we get a completely dead set of strings, okay? And what you'll find is that we're working from complete silence there. So if I was to accidentally knock the bass, we haven't got any noise, you know, we're not going to get this kind of thing. So this is a great position to be on stage. You know, as soon as you plug in your bass and you're stood there, if you don't have your volume turned off, if you stand like this with your hand there, no matter what happens, you know, you know, on stage, you know, because anything can happen on stage, we know that we're not going to get any uh, horrible noises there. And we're going to avoid any kind of residual sound from the, uh, from the vibrations of the other strings that we're not playing. So we're working from a standpoint of silence. So that's the home position. Now, the good thing about this uh, position when we're looking at ghost notes is that we actually get ghost notes when we play one of those strings. Look, I'm not doing anything. I've just got that home position. Pick a note any note, whichever string, and we get a ghost note. So we're working from a position where we can play ghost notes. So what we do now is when we play the riff, we're actually starting in that home position, and then we allow the notes through. So when I go for that C, I raise second, the second, third, and fourth fingers, I press down with that first finger, and pluck. Okay, so I'm allowing it to come through. But when I want to cut the note off, I just go back to home position. 
get a good muscle memory for what that home position feels like. Okay, so we start there. Okay, so we, we get the home position before we even play a note. Then allow the note through, and then when we want to cut it off, we go back to the home position. I'm not thinking bring the fingers down. I'm thinking raise that finger. Well, I'm releasing pressure on the C and bringing those fingers down. But, you know, I'm not really thinking of the physical action there of bringing the fingers down to cut off the note. I'm just thinking home position. I'm just thinking back to that original position. Okay? And that cuts the note off. So, when we play the riff, if we're allowing those notes to come through and then we cut the note off, again, we're in position for the ghost note. So, very slowly, you can see there that because I'm in this home position, I don't have any problems playing the ghost note. I'm not trying to play the ghost note. You know, I'm not thinking note and then, okay, for the ghost note, I've got to, you know, drop the fingers down and, and do this. I'm not purposefully going for the ghost note. It's just that if I pluck while I'm in home position, I get a ghost note. So, see, I'm not purposefully going for the ghost notes. If I pick while I'm in home position, I get one. I find this a really intuitive way of playing and teaching about ghost notes because ghost notes often precede fretted notes. You know, they're seen as leading into a fretted note. So if I was to play two ghost notes, fretted note, you know, ta -ka -dam, you know, they're leading into that fretted note. So it, to do that, you would just have the home position, play two notes, and then, you know, the fretted note. So. And it's worth practicing little moves like that because they're going to come up all the time in ghost note, 16th note lines. You know, just try playing two ghost notes and a fretted note. And just get used to that snap there. So, back to the riff, we just apply that home position. So, I get into the position and then I try that 16th note rhythm. See, the hand is barely moving. It's really good for, uh, you know, applying minimal movement. So, there's the hand all laid there. I'm just allowing that C through. And then I just use the pinky, the fourth finger there, to catch that G at the fifth fret of the D string. Which keeps the hand, again, nice and tidy there. Back again to the C. And then again, I'm barely moving again. I'm just angling the hand a little to catch that uh, octave C up there at the uh, fifth fret of the G string. And these other fingers here are still angled over the A and the E string and the D string, which is keeping everything nice and quiet. We're not getting any noise from the larger strings down here because it's all muted. The hand is still there. I'm just pressing down with that fourth finger. See how these fingers here are all cutting off any kind of residual noise we might get from the lower strings. When we move up to the E flat, again, I'm staying in that home position. I'm just moving this home position around. So everything is nice and clean all the way through the riff. One other thing that you're likely to have problems with in this riff is the string skipping, so jumping around on those octaves. And one move in particular um, is likely to give you trouble, and that's the four 16th notes in a row, and then the jump back to the C. So we're on the C octave there. So try taking that, uh, that little line in isolation. Whenever you have problems with anything like this, isolate the problem. So, I'm on the C fifth fret of the G string there, and I'm going to play the four sixteenth notes. And for the finger picking, it's in the order middle index, middle index, or two, one, two, one. Okay, one, two, three, four, in terms of the fingers. So we've got two, one, two, one, and then jumping back onto the lower C there, the third fret of the A string, with the second finger, or the middle finger. Okay, so middle index, middle index, middle. Now that can feel a little bit alien to, uh, to you if you're not used to doing it, because we get so used to playing octave patterns, where we're using the index finger for the lower string, and then the middle finger for the higher string. So it feels more natural because the uh, index finger is shorter than the middle finger. So it stands to reason that when we're coming back, we're using that shorter finger. 
But here, we're going to be jumping back on the second finger. So, you know, you've got to get used to that jump with the second finger back to, uh, to our lower note. So I would just isolate that move and then just try that in isolation. As you're building up speed, you'll notice that there are several points in the riff where you can focus on your finger picking, you know, certain little waypoints in there. And um, I always find that as I'm working through, I take, uh, pay a special attention to the starting finger in terms of the finger picking on the G there. So, and I know that I'm playing that with the first finger or the index finger. So I'm starting index and then middle. Okay, so index, middle. Then when I come back, when I'm on the upper octave there, I'm middle, index, middle, index, as I was just talking about before. Then when we move up to the E flat, there's the index finger for the first note of the octave there. And then as I drop down, and I'm usually using the uh, middle finger index for the D flat octave, okay? So they're just little waypoints. So when you're building up speed and everything's going by fast, there's just certain little points that you can think, okay, that's, uh, that's where I should be on the first finger or that's where I should be on the second finger, okay? And you'll start to, you know, kind of feel it, you know, you'll, you'll know which finger you're on on one of those waypoints. And if you're trying to be consistent with your finger picking, you might start to think, oh, that's why that felt wrong. That's why I got finger twisted there. It's because I'm on the wrong finger. And as I was talking about with the, um, previously with the classical piece that I learned, the solfeggetto, you know, as we were working through that, I talked about it there, about how you can have little waypoints when you've got these fast streams of 16th notes. You know, if you're working at speed on those things, it always pays to have little waypoints where you can just um, reassess where you're at, you know, and, and think, okay, well, on that note, I should be on that finger, and on that note, I should be on that finger. Okay, so that riff should provide you with some practice material for quite some time. As I mentioned earlier, you can download the tab and the track from over at TalkingBass.net, so just follow that link in the info below, and then be sure to check out all of the courses on the products page, whether you want to address the basics, your technique, whether you want to learn how to do a bass setup, sight read, ear training, whatever the topic, we've got a course for you. So go check that out and I'll see you next week.